Hello, hello, hello. It is whipping chat time. Um, and I'm going to hang out and I'm going to work on this gorgeous painting for a while while I chit chat with you. It's called Sunrise by the Sea. It is my Chuck Pinson. It is gorgeous. So I'm impressed. I, I've gotten some progress done here. I went up this way and I came down this way and I'm down in here somewhere. I've gotten two rows done. Yeah. Um, I got a long ways to go. <laughs> I had a long ways to go, but I'm impressed with the progress that I have made already. So um, firefly tray, just because it matches. Look, it's got my name on it. Uh, TJ pen because it matches. <laughs> Oh, so I'm going to dump some drills out here. I'm going to work on the stars for a while. Oh, I got to show you my cover minder, but it's down here. Hang on. It's like dangling down here because that's where I needed it. But here's my cover minder from Saban. So pretty. All right, I'm just going to set it there. It's heavy enough. I don't even need to worry about the magnet. It just, it will hold my plastic. I got a lot of stuff on here, though. I got a lot of stuff to hold things down with. I got my drills. and Yeah. Anyhow. All right. So um, this is to the point where I'm, I'm doing a lot of the pathway that goes up to the lighthouse. And um, I've gone through a lot of tan colors, like all through here. This is the path that's coming up. Over here, I get some rocks. There's a little bit more... Uh, path over here or something lots of rocks though but there's lots of flowers still there's flowers down in the bottom and flowers over here and the flowers are beautiful they're just beautiful i'm having a blast with it i really am i have been diamond painting a lot more than i had been uh, i think that smashing the specials was just a good it was a good kickstart for me. I did a lot of stuff during Smashing the Specials. I was on a roll. I'm like, I'm going to get a lot of these done because I have hundreds. You heard me. Hundreds of special drill paintings. <laughs> um, so I did get a lot done. And then I've just been kind of on a roll since then. I'm just really... I mean, there's not a lot going on outside right now. It's not really time to weed much. I, I'm not even worried about weeding at this point because I'll tell you why. Uh, yeah, there's weeds out there. But all of the flowers are at that point where they're looking a little shabby. Things are starting to die. Nothing's flowering much. I mean, my phlox is still flowering. And the honeysuckle vines are still flowering, but uh, there's just not a lot going on, floral-wise. And we're about at that point, maybe another month, maybe. In October, we'll get out there and we'll just clean out everything out of the gardens, cut everything back, cut everything down, um, you know, just kind of waiting for frost. When frost hits, then it's going to um, determine when we get out there and start cleaning up everything. We'll cut back all the iris, cut them down, and cut them really low. Just weed everything really good. And that's what we do in the fall. So right now, I'm just kind of like, yeah, I don't really care. You know, I don't really care. Whatever's happening out there is happening. If there's some flowers on things, awesome. If there's not, there's not. And when I start cutting things back, it'll just be a whole lot easier to weed everything at that time. So that's kind of the plan. So I've just been inside doing stuff. Um, Dale has been busy working. Um, he worked for his daughter, <laughs> worked for his daughter, <laughs> worked at his daughter's building a new deck. It's pretty much completed now he was there for i don't know days and days and days um there's still a few things to do but he kind of took a break from it and now he's working for the farmer 
a farmer that has the assisted living house home. Yeah. So he's doing just all kinds of random things for him. Drove around one day picking up chairs and couches. One was for a resident for her room and one she donated to the house so they could put that one in the common room. So they did that one day. And now they have two residents over there, his first residence. And since he has two residents now, someone needs to be on property 24-7. Now there's only two of them that actually can do that. Um, that is him and his daughter. So, and there's this interesting requirement that for the first year he has this open, it has to be him or her on site. So he's spending a lot of time there. <laughs> so he's kind of called up Dale. Why won't you get out of my tray? It, it won't leave. It won't leave. Go. So he's called up Dale and asked him, you know, if he would be willing to help out. He'd pay him if he wanted to do a little work for him. And Dale, of course, was like, well, sure. <laughs> well, sure, he says. Um, he had another employee, which was the girlfriend's, but not the girlfriend, the daughter's boyfriend. But the daughter's boyfriend, uh, he said, just didn't work out that well. <laughs> he he needed too much hand holding and guidance and it just wasn't working out so good. So he kind of got rid of him. But he likes how Dale works. He knows you can tell Dale, I need this done and Dale will just do it. So that's kind of what's been happening. Some of it is stuff over at the house, like um for the last couple of days he's put in a few hours touching up some paint in certain places and installing blinds in the bedrooms. Okay. Well, he's doing that again today. He's touching up paint and installing blinds. He is working on the fence line out behind our house because it's just got one wire back there. There's a lot of brush, so the cows really don't try getting through there, but he doesn't really have it opened up completely either. So he was like, well, if I could get, you know, some reinforced fencing back there, get the fence line done up a little nicer. He said it gives me just a little more room for the cows to wander and whatnot. They was like, no problem. So one day he was out there like all day, pretty much, um, cutting trees. He found trees from the storm that were down on the fence back there, which the farmer didn't even know that. And he cut those, cut those up. And then he just worked on clearing the line, like getting everything away from the line. You know, it's only got one strand of wire back there and they want to put in three strands of wire and really make it secure for these little, well, baby cows, baby cows. They just kind of they go wherever they want to go. <laughs> um, they're not small anymore, but they still, they're, you know, they're babies and they're mischievous and they get into stuff. So he wants to reinforce. So Dale worked on that. And then later that evening, he went and he got the neighbor's tractor with the lawnmower and got it over to the, the house, the assisted living home, and he mowed. Oh, man, really? There's three of those right there. The ones I just put away, of course. So he did that one day and he mowed. He was done working on the fence line for all. He weed whacked the whole line. He did, you know, everything. So he went and he mowed. He hasn't gotten back to the fence again because now he's asked him if he'll work on the paint and the, the blinds. So we're on paint and blinds for now. <laughs> um, currently... It's Tuesday, of course, and you know how Taco Tuesday is. Somebody sent me a funny meme about Taco Tuesdays. Oh, I know it was. It was an old lady, old grandma lady going to Taco Tuesday wearing her taco hat. <laughs> I'm like, yep, that'll be Dale. You're right. Every Tuesday he's going to be Taco Tuesday grandpa. Well, today 
he was over there working at the house and mentioned he had to leave for a little bit. And um, His name's Brad, you guys. I'll just call him Brad, okay? Brad was like, um, oh, you got to go somewhere? And he goes, yeah, it's Tuesday, man. It's Taco Tuesday. I got to go get tacos. Well, the two ladies that are living there heard him say tacos. His daughter heard him say tacos. And they're all like, you're getting tacos? <laughs> tacos sound great. So they all decided they wanted tacos, right? So they're trying to find the place online. His daughter's trying to order tacos for everybody. And they don't have an online presence, right? It's not that kind of a place. It's just this supermarket with a little kitchen in the back. <laughs> so they couldn't order online. And they just said, well, just pick up tacos and bring them back. You know, and Brad will pay for all of it, you know, out of the, the house funds and whatnot. So they was like, okay, well, I'll be back with tacos. I don't know what all he's getting, what he's ending up with. I don't know if all them women want all that cilantro on their tacos or what he's getting for them, but I don't know. He's picking up tacos for everybody. I just had to laugh at that. All right. You've gone from painting to ranch hand to taco delivery. I have to laugh. All right. But you know what? I think he really kind of likes it. I think he's just enjoying it. Like, He's feeling useful and, you know, I don't know. I, it's funny. It's just kind of funny. So he's going to go back um, and work on the blinds some more and try to get the rest of those blinds in those bedrooms. After that, I have no idea. I, I have no idea what he's doing after that. He could be on all day for all I know. So, I mean, since the storm, you know, he was down the street, cutting wood, helping the neighbors, um, helping them with their generator. Then he installed a garage door opener. And it's just, he's just go, 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 go. And good for him. <laughs> just, you know, that's what he wants to do. Good for him. Also, good for me, right? Because he's not bugging me to do stuff. <laughs> That's how I have been able to diamond paint so much because he's just like, he's doing his thing and I'm just home doing my thing. He's not even asking me what I'm doing. He doesn't even seem to care. And so I'm happy with that. But I know it won't last because winter will come. Although I don't know, he might end up doing like more lawn stuff, not lawn, but like snow, maybe more snow removal and because, I mean, Brad's going to be over at that house. I mean, he has to sleep there and everything, you know. So, he's going to be busy. Um, we'll see how it all goes. I don't know. All right. I'm going to get these weird little things I missed back here. Before I leave this color palette. I'm doing like the yellows and the... Um, okay, come on. I thought I could just dunk in my jar and get them out. Come on. Dunk. Not working. Harder press. Dunk all the way to the bottom. There. <laughs> if I dip all the way to the bottom, it will stick. Okay. That one didn't. <laughs> okay. I might have to just pick out. <sighs> Dang it. I pick out two. I see two more. One and two. There we go. Okay. If I find more, then I'm really going to be angry. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Um, and I don't want to be outside right now. <clears throat> I don't. Because, let me just say, ragweed. Let's, I mean, that's all I need to say is ragweed, ragweed. It's beautiful out there. It's just gorgeous. There's yellow flowers everywhere. <clears throat> and you see what it does to me. Mm -hmm. Ragweed, not my friend. Not my friend friend at all. Do I stick with the yellow tones? Do the U's and the C's? Yeah, we'll do the U's and the C's. We'll stick with the yellow tones. We're just going to get into the flowers now though. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so, you know, my allergies bug me from spring until frost. I mean, they do. 
spring until frost. Something's out there that's going to make me sneeze, get stuffed up, you name it. But I will say this. Fall is the worst. Okay? And I attribute that to my friend, the ragweed. Oh, goodness. I have been just like sniffling and stuffed up. And I mean, I have a horrible taste in my mouth. Like it's almost an infection. And I'm just like, ugh. No, I'm over it. I am ready for a hard frost, but I don't know when we'll have one of those. <laughs> I have a feeling I have a while yet. First of all, the ragweed is still blooming beautifully. It's, you know, in its prime. <laughs> and we're not going to have frost until that's done, for sure. But, yeah, it's just... Ugh. Okay, I'm over it. So, today I took... I took, I always take an Allegra every day. Allegra, out of all of the allergy medications, Allegra has always done the best for me. So I take that every day. But then today, I've also taken a cold medicine, which just has a decongestant and sinus pressure and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. It's like a DayQuil. But I get like just a generic I've taken that. Uh, let that work for a little while. And I still had a raging headache. <laughs> so I took some extra strength Excedrin. That kind of knocked it, knocked it out a little bit to the point where I was like, okay, I can function. I can talk. I can do my whip and chat. You know, that kind of stuff. So it was a slow morning to get going for sure. Dale was up bright and early, well, 8 o'clock, which is unusual for him. But, you know, now he's employed. <laughs> Starting time over there is 9. Well, they're there 24-7, so they don't really have a starting time. But when he was working with him before, Brad would always get started at 9 o'clock. <laughs> so Dale's just like, I'll be there at 9. Okay, see you at 9. <laughs> so he was up and he was taking a shower and he was ready to make breakfast and I was just kind of sitting on the couch like my eyes are barely open my head hurts my face hurts I just want to sit here and chill for a while and crochet and he's like well I'm having breakfast do you want breakfast and I'm like uh no not really <laughs> it was just one of those days I was like just not into much of anything. So he made himself French toast. And I was like, okay, well, that's fine. I don't really want any. I wasn't feeling hungry. I just, no. He had French toast. Got his stuff together. Took off with his little paintbrush and his little, um, what do you call them things? The scraper thing, like the spatula looking thing. Took off with toes in his hand and he's like, I'm off to work. Like, okay, have fun. <laughs> oh, I finally got up and I took a shower. That helped a little bit. I think sometimes when you get so much of that pollen and junk up your nose and stuff, taking a shower, you know, that nice hot water just kind of helps get it all out of your face <laughs> and it helps you feel a little better. So I did that. Never did have breakfast. And I haven't had lunch. I had some crackers. I had a handful of crackers. But not, well, they're not real crackers. They are. They're cracker chips. They're like thin little chip things, but they're crackery. Hard to explain what they are. And I don't remember the name or who makes them, but they're good. And I eat a lot of them lately. So, uh, yeah, that's what I've had so far. <laughs> that's it couple handfuls of the crackers and I still don't feel hungry um there's some other reasons for that too but I'm not going into that here <laughs> anyhow I've done an unboxing and I actually worked on it a little bit you'll see that real soon um yeah that's what I'm up to
Yesterday, Dale went to the dentist. Now, I think I mentioned a while back that he found out he needed a crown and his dentist was going to charge him like, I don't even know, a ton of money, right? And when investigating further, we found out that it's because his dentist opted out of the network that we use. Um, and so it was going to cost Dale a lot more money for everything, for all of his services. Having a dentist out of network was going to be expensive. He didn't like that idea. He also didn't like the idea of leaving his dentist, who he really did like the dentist. But what are you going to do? I mean, just because you like the dentist and he's now gone out of network doesn't mean we should have to pay a lot more money. So I said, well, you can try my dentist. You know, I've had this guy for a while now. And um, he took over the practice for the dentist I'd had since I was young, like very young. And he opened a practice with his wife. His wife was a practicing dentist as well. They have their own practice, not together. And so Dale checked it out. He went out there and he had an appointment and he met him and all that. And he's like, okay, well, we'll give it a go. Um, so, you know, I've had just a little adjustment issue with my crown that I got. That made Dale a little nervous. These aren't wanting to stick. See that? They're not wanting to stick. They're ABs. But um, I said, it, you know, don't, don't judge my little issue I'm having here with my crown on what this dentist can do. It's actually pretty neat how he'll do your crown right there, same day, uh, makes the crown. It's ceramic, fires it in a little oven. It's pretty cool. And you're done. You walk out the door and you got your tooth, right? So he went. He got it done. He also had a filling done while he was there. He had one tooth. He had two little fillings on two different surfaces he needed to have filled. And he came home, and he was actually done really quick. I was surprised how quick he was back home. I think he was quicker than me. And I think it's all because he didn't have to really sit around and just wait for the tooth because the dentist got the tooth processing and then worked on fillings and everything just went really quick. So Dale was like, he thought it was an awesome process. It was pretty cool, you know? And uh, he came home and he didn't want to eat. Yesterday was my sister's birthday. We talked about maybe going and getting something to eat with my dad for her birthday, but then Dale's like, no, <laughs> just no. You can go if you want, but I'm not you know, wanting to go really eat much of anything. Matter of fact, we had soup for dinner. That's what we had, soup. Mm -hmm. um, but later on in the evening, um, I got cold. I, I got cold. It was down to 65 in our house or something like that. And I was so tempted to turn on the furnace, but I'm like, no. So Dale was like, we'll start a fire. And I'm like, a fire with wood. I don't have any wood. So he went out and he got some wood. You know, we got plenty of wood now that it's cut. It's just all out back. Normally in the wintertime, we have some up on the deck, but there was no wood up on the deck. So he goes out and he gets some wood and he started a fire. He's such a nice guy. He's like, here, how's that? And I'm like, oh, that's so nice. And I stood in front of the fire for a while. I was cold. I mean, I was fully dressed, pants, a shirt, a sweater. I had shoes on. I never wear shoes in my house, but I had shoes on because my feet were cold. So I stood there in front of the fire and got warm. And then it really got cranking. The fire did. And the whole house warmed right up. He'd closed the doors to the two bedrooms, but everything else is wide open in this house, you know? So um, I looked at the thermostat at one point. I mean, I took my sweater off and everything, and I looked at the thermostat, and it was 72 in here. I'm like, well, okay, it got warm. Nice. And then him and I sat in here in the office, and he watched his videos, and I diamond painted again. <laughs> So, I mean, 
we're spending time together, right? I was listening to, uh, what was I listening to? Oh, Brandy was live. I listened to that for a while. Watched a video, stuff like that. And I just diamond painted. And then, you know, it's getting late. I went out and put the chickens and the ducks in. I was a nice girl. It was raining. That's why it was so cold yesterday. I mean, the temperature wasn't that cold, but it was rainy and dreary. And whenever it's rainy and dreary, you just feel colder and you feel that it's like wet cold, you know, from all the rain yesterday. It would just rain, drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. Then it would stop, rain some more, stop. It was all day long. So uh, I went out and put the chickens and the ducks in, and it was raining then. So I put on his shoes. <laughs> Don't tell him I wore his shoes. <laughs> They're just his crappy shoes, anyhow. But I put his shoes on and his hoodie on, and I went outside and took care of the chickens and the ducks. And then when I got back in, it was like, yeah, we're both going to just go to bed now. Um, I'm going to go read for book club because I wasn't done. I'm still not done. I got about 10 pages. I got to read today, this afternoon. <laughs> um, so we did that. And when I, by the time I got into the bedroom, he was just laying on the bed with all of his clothes on and his hand over his head. And I was like, hi, honey. <laughs> I'm like, Is, you don't feel good? You got a headache? He goes, no, my mouth hurts. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, okay. I'm like, did you take something? Uh-huh, okay. I just laid on bed and read for a while. He fell asleep, and he finally got up when I was, like, ready to, like, put my book down and stuff. He got up and, you know, at least took off his pants and stuff and turned off the light and came back to sleep and that's all I heard of him I mean I think I did hear him snoring a little bit <laughs> I know I did but yeah I know what that's like I mean some of those procedures can be uh, you know they oh no we don't want you you got ickiness on you ickiness they can really like you know make your mouth sore for a while so I understood he's not feeling good. The mouth is hurting, all that. So he woke up this morning, though, and he was like, fine. Didn't hurt. He's off to work and go get tacos, just like, you know, everything normal. So I'm glad. I hope his experience was good. He really liked the process of what the, you know, dentist did and stuff like that. And he seemed kind of impressed. And, okay, we did find out some bad news, though. Bad news is that Dale has used up his insurance for the year. Yeah. So the first thing he said to me on the way home, he calls me and he's like, I thought this was supposed to be cheaper. And I'm like, uh, it is because this dentist is in network and we have excellent coverage. He's like, well, this is how much I had to pay. And I'm like, ah, why? You know why? I didn't understand. So I'm calling the dentist to find out the reason why he had to pay so much was because he had used up all of his money for the year. Yikes, right? I mean, and the lady at the dentist office, she's like, and you guys have super good insurance. You have one of the best out there. They pay the most. But, you know, you still have this limit. And unfortunately, if you have, you know, a couple of fillings done a year, a couple of cleanings, you burn right through that allowable amount. So Dale had to pay more than I did because he'd gone over the limit and he had to pay what he was over the limit. I was like, oh, well, he's supposed to have another cleaning this year. And he's like, nope, not doing it. He said, I'll wait. So they postponed that, and he was supposed to have another procedure. And, I mean, I think I've had a lot of uh, dental work done in my mouth, but Dale has had a ton of dental work done in his mouth. He has, what does he have, three or four implants? I don't even remember how many now. 
I know there's at least three. There might be four. And those are all his front teeth. I mean, like he knocked them out, you know? Mm. Yeah. Well, now he has another tooth that has something going on with it. Um, they think it might have an abscess or some infection in there, but they can't get to it. They can't get to it through the tooth. No. So they have to go in through his gum. They have to like cut up into his gum and lift the gum up and get up in there that way. And I'm like, ew, that's no fun. That's like surgery. It's an oral surgery. And that was scheduled for October. Well, <laughs> uh, he would have to pay for that out of pocket now because all of his money is used up. And he's like, nope, not doing that. And I'm like, okay, I hope it's okay to wait. You know what I mean? I hope it's okay to wait that you're not going to have some problem if you wait. So he's going to, he's going to wait. And I'm like, okay, honey. I mean, the tooth doesn't bother him. It doesn't hurt. And knock on wood, you know, knock, knock, <laughs> that it won't start bothering him at all. And he can wait until next year to get it done. I mean, they gave him all kinds of medicine. He's got a, a mouthwash he's supposed to use. He's got antibiotics he's supposed to take before and after this procedure. He's got uh, pain medicine for it. I mean, he's, he's all hooked up and ready to go. But he's going to call him and he's going to cancel that and, you know, reschedule it for sometime next year. And I'm like, I don't blame him because it's going to cost a lot of money. I mean, he's probably still going to end up paying quite a bit out of pocket for it even, is my guess. But I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Oh, teeth. You got to have them, right? You got to have them. I mean, it was just a tooth kind of month around here. My crown, Dale's crown. He had the two fillings. Tifa had all her teeth pulled. I mean, it was all about teeth. I thought it was interesting when I was talking about Tifa and her teeth last week that so many of you were like, yeah, we just, it wasn't a thing to take a dog in to have their teeth cleaned or dental work. It wasn't a thing, you know, like when we were kids and we had animals, I don't ever remember my parents ever doing anything for the dog's teeth, right? And many of you said the same thing, but now it is a thing. They like to clean their teeth and, you know, I, I, I see the value in it. I really do. It is expensive, but, you know, things change. We learn things as we go. <laughs> the world changes all the time. But yeah, it was, it's just been a dental month around here. I'm ready for it to not be a dental month anymore <laughs> because... Oof, that dental stuff gets expensive. I'm not certain that my tooth is good yet, you know, and it's been another week now, and I'm still not certain that my tooth is good. It still tends to tweak me a little if I chew that, you know, harder stuff just on that back tooth, but I don't know. I don't know what to do with it. Um, let me say, I just did orange ABs, right? So I did orange ABs here. I did yellow here. I'm going to do red. So that's three. I'm going to do white, and that's four. And I'm going to do pink. That's five. And I'm going to do purple. That's six. Six. That is all of the ABs. Six. No, nope, there's white. Sorry. Six out of the seven ABs all show up. In this one little section right there right <laughs> I'm like um okay that is a lot of a B action in one small section so I like to kind of spice it up with the a B's or switch it up let's say I switch it up so this is what I have learned a lot of times your a B's don't like to stick in your pen right but I have learned this interesting little trick I don't know how I learned it even, but I learned that 
I can do a few ABs. So, for example, I'll single place some of these pinks. And I will single place them until they stop sticking. Now, I've got a glue dot in here, and they will stop sticking. ABs just have something on them. It's not the coating that's coming off. The coating doesn't come off, but they just have something on them that makes them stop sticking in whatever you're putting in your pen. Wax, putty, glue dots, doesn't matter. So I'll sit here and I'll do some of the ABs for a while until they stop sticking, right? And then I'll switch to regular drills and the regular drills will stick just fine in my pen. They'll stick just fine. So then I'll just do a bunch of regular drills and I'll come back and I'll do ABs again. And miraculously, the ABs will stick again <laughs> without doing anything. Without, and I can't even like prove that to you now because that's all I had of the pinks and they all stuck just fine. But yeah, I just alternate. If they stop stick into my pen, I'll just stop doing the ABs, go do some regular drills, and come back to the ABs, and everything's fine and dandy. It's weird, and I don't know how I learned that, but it seems to work every time. <laughs> I put the R's away, and I just found R's over there. I found one. One R, of course. All right. That's the fun, though, about the confetti stuff. And these are confetti. I mean, there is no doubt about it. Although, this section is with the flowers. There has been a lot of color blocking. I color blocked with my multi-placer like crazy up through here and the house up here. Okay, right here. I don't know. I don't. You probably can't see it. There, there's a cat. Okay, I'll show you in the picture. There's a cat, and the cat is right underneath this flower archway. And I put some drills down here, some dark drills that's supposed to be the cat. And I look at it and I'm like, I ain't no cat. I don't know what that looks like. I might go back and take them out and just put green back in for the grass because they do not look like a cat. <laughs> they do not. Oh, boy. I mean, you know, it's a little tiny little thing. How, how's a cat going to turn out in this big, huge painting? Not well. Not very well. That's how. <laughs> Oh boy. Anyhow, I'm having a blast with this. Um, we got a lot of people participating. Maritza, I don't think, has done week one spreadsheet yet. You know how Maritza is. She'll get it done, but you know. <laughs> I'll know. I'll know soon. She'll get she'll work on it a little bit and she'll let me know. Um, but there's a lot of people that are participating, and I'm like, woo, yay! lot of chucksters out there going to town. I'm happy about that. You know, this is what chuck along eight. We have done this eight times. Eight. Wow. <laughs> out of the eight times. Okay. Eight's not finished. Clearly seven didn't get finished. So that means I have six, six of them that I did complete. I have two that are in frames and in my hallway. So I have four in there just laying on the bed. I need to get some more of them framed somehow so I can maybe alternate. Um, what is it? Spring Mountain. The purple one is up on the wall. And um, Bluebird Song is in a frame leaning up against the wall on the floor. That's a smaller one that was easy to find a frame for. But I need to frame some of the others or have a system that I can rotate them easily. Storing those big ones is always going to be an issue, no matter what. Um, yeah, I, I, I need to get some of the others up on the wall. Give them a shot. Give them a time to shine on the wall. I kind of like what I did with the one on the wall. You know, we took um, door trim and cut it. 
and just I glued the painting to the back of the door trim, you know, by the by the top here. I just glued the door trim on here, top and bottom. So it works kind of like those magnetic frames that people use with just those bars, you know, that clamp on both sides. It works similar to that. It's just I used door trim and I believe it was, you know, cheaper, of course, to use the door trim. And that's how the purple majesty one is on the wall. Now, if I went and got some more door trim, I could do the same thing. It was super easy to do. They'll just cut it to size and I cut off the sides, you know, I cut off the side with the legends and just glued it on there and it hangs there just beautifully. So it's got a perfect spot right there on the wall to put other paintings. Um, and I'm thinking, okay, if I take that one down, I take it down, how do I store that one? Because I mean, you've got wood that's like a few inches. On the top and the bottom, I can't really just roll it because it's not going to roll like into a round roll. How would I store the one I take down? I don't know. Unless, I don't know, unless I find some place that I could just hang it. Like if I attached all of them to trim like that. And then I could just hang them somewhere until I wanted to put them up. But I don't know where that would be. I don't know where I would hang them. I really don't know. But my, thought, my thoughts are racing here. You know, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Because some of the others that I have finished are so pretty. And I want to give them an opportunity. Like my favorite one, Brookside Retreat, it's done. It's finished and it just lays in there on the bed and I don't ever get to see it again, right? I really, really, really want to get Brookside Retreat out on the wall where I can see it. I'm going to have to work on that. Maybe I just take them back down and just lay them on the bed like the others were, right? I'm trying to deal with the paintings that are finished that are on the bed. You know, I can't frame everything. Well, I could, but... You know, I got to come up with something. What do I do with them? You know, so I have one I'm getting ready to frame, and that is the uh, the big fairy from Craftably. I bought a beautiful white frame, and it won't work. I'll tell you why it won't work. When I saw the frame, I was super excited. It's white. It would have been so pretty with the fairy because, you know, there's a lot of white and light colors in that one. It would have been beautiful, but it won't fit, even though the frame was the exact size as the painting. And I thought, okay, exact size, it's going to plop right in there. The edges are going to get covered just a little, and I'm fine with that. I'm fine. It, there wasn't a lot of edges, so it wasn't going to cover much of the painting, right? But I got it home and I started looking at it and it won't fit because that craftably painting is larger than it says. I think it's like 24 by 36 or something like that. And it's actually 25 and a half by 37 and a half or something. It's a lot larger then the dimensions say that it is. I mean, I've never really had that happen, that it's that much bigger than what it says. Smaller, yes. Bigger, no. So that would have meant I would have to cut off inches of my painting. And I'm not doing that. I, I'm not doing that. I looked at it and I was like, no, I would be cutting off a lot of her dress at the bottom or a lot of the pretty wing stuff on the side. I'm like, no, I'm not cutting it off. So unfortunately, that frame will not work. Now, I have the largest poster frame that is made. 
And I'm thinking, okay, I can use that. It's black. And I'm not thrilled with that. I really liked the white. Don't, I can't paint it. I can't paint it. It's just that plastic kind of frame. It's not even wood, you know. So I really can't paint the frame. But, but what I'm going to do, and I'll probably, I'm going to show you. I'm going to like try to video it and show you. I'm going to cut poster board to fit inside it because it's big. One sheet of poster board will not fit. So I'm going to cut poster board to fit inside it. And so then I'm going to cover the poster board with fabric. Mm -hmm. Cover the poster board with fabric that's going to match the painting. I've already bought the fabric. And then I'm going to put the painting on top of the fabric and glue it on there. Right? Yeah, glue. Mm, lots of glue. <laughs> But it will work. I have done that with one other painting before. One or two, maybe. But it'll work. If I could have just used poster board, I would. But the poster board isn't big enough. And so I'm going to have to like tape two pieces of poster board together. And then you would see that. You would see, you know, the line where I, you know, attach them together and we don't we don't want that so I'm gonna have to cover it but I'm ready to work on that it's just a matter of sit down and do it I've been so fixated on just diamond painting diamond painting and diamond painting I don't really want to do anything other than diamond paint well I crochet in the mornings <laughs> but then it's all diamond painting as much as I can throughout the day so but I got to do that I've got to do it now I got to go back and return that frame because that frame is not going to work. So I'll get on that project. I wanted to get a little bit ahead of this. I was doing one square a day, one of the release papers, you know, so like the Crashly, Crashly, uh, people love your re list release paper, Crashly, the sunflower one. I love it too. Um, but I was getting one section done a day. I'm like, okay, I'm good. I'm good with that. It's not going to be enough to finish this whole thing in the month. I know that. I don't even know how many of these it's going to take. I certainly do not cover the whole painting. I only do a row at a time. So I think it's, is it six? Is it six sections? I don't know. They're all here. Let's see. How many sections are there? Huh. Let's see. We have one, two, Three, four, five, six. No, it's seven. Seven sections. So I'm doing seven sections. Um, I will say that the last two are not full sections because they overlap a bit. But I have seven release papers on a row. All right. So I'm working on the 14th one right now. And that's two rows. I don't know how many inches it is. I don't know. But... Um, what was my point? What was my point? Oh, I was doing one a day. And so then I was getting to where I was finishing my section for the day and starting the next days. And I was like, okay, each day, maybe I can get a little further ahead. So I'm technically, I'm on tomorrow's section right now. I am a section ahead now. Woo -woo. I got a whole section ahead, right? <laughs> and that's what I was trying to do. Because I know I need to do more than one section a day to finish this thing in a month. I still don't think I'm going to make it, but I'm giving it all it's worth. I'm giving it a run for its money, right? So I'm on tomorrow's section right now. If I finish this one up, is that right? That's right. Yes. Because today is the, wait, is today the 12th? Today's the 12th. Yesterday was my sister's birthday. Today's the 12th, and I'm on section 14. I'm more than that. I'm more than that ahead, right? I'm more than that ahead. Because <laughs> I'm on section 14. 
but I, the last two sections really don't count as a whole section. I think I'm in, I've been counting them as one because they're not a full, yeah. Anyhow, I'm ahead of the game, ahead of one section per day. That's all I know. I'm ahead. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, yeah, ABs. I'm on ABs again. I'm doing the red now. Doing the red, doing the red. It's so pretty. There are so many ABs in the flowers, you guys. It's so pretty. I love it. All right. Um, as far as Chuck Along goes, make sure that you are posting your pictures in Diamond Moments and Crafts. I mean, it goes by the date. Not a day, but the date. First through the 7th. Then through the 14th. And through the, you know, that's how it rolls, right? One post per week now, your progress. Make sure you get it in there before the 14th, right? Which is, if today is the 12th, 13th, that's Thursday, right? So get your progress in there so you get your entry for the week. Next week is a progress. And then we'll talk about the final week where you can have progress and a finish. So make sure you're posting once a week for now, okay? Um, somebody asked, and I haven't been able to respond yet. I think I saw a comment in the Facebook group. They asked if there were weekly prizes or um, things like that, and like, no. The answer to that is no. We have... All of our prizes we give away at the end. So you're not missing anything until the very end. And then that's when we'll give away all of our prizes. We have gift cards. We have diamond paintings. We have Australian diamond paintings. Thank you, Nikki, who's going to give away stuff to Australians. So please, if you're in Australia, make sure we know that. Um, if you haven't told us that so far, if you haven't said that yet, make sure you do this week when you post. So that Maritza can note that in the spreadsheet that you are an Australian participant and you are eligible for the paintings that Nikki is going to mail out. Okay. Um, other than that, I think we're, we're covered. Get ready for October though. October, I'm doing an event with Saban, my sweet Saban, love Saban. Um, and we're calling it No One Fights Alone. And it is um, cancer information, support, you know, all of those things. It is breast cancer month, but we wanted to expand it a little more than, you know, that. Um, to anyone who has dealt with cancer in any way, personally, a loved one, a friend, you know, it's hard. It's tough. You know, my sister, this is her second round she's gone through. And um, this one was, I mean, it was harder than the first one. I will say that but in a different way. The first time she had chemo and radiation, and that was all difficult. This time it was a whole different route. And um, she's recovering, and she's going to make it. And she's, you know, she's fought and battle and you know no one fights alone and it was her birthday yesterday and she didn't really do anything for her birthday um but she's just thankful that she's here that she's alive that she's you know at this point the cancer's gone because you know they took it all <laughs> and um you know no one fights alone. She's had friends and family and loved ones and doctors and nurses and just, you know, therapists and all kinds of things to help with her battle. So we know what it's like that nobody fights this alone. Um, it's a disease that, man, it just it has touched so many people and so many lives. And uh, that's what we want to celebrate and talk about you know yeah so that's what it's about as far as what you're going to diamond paint it's a diamond painting that reminds you of someone 
that has gone through that struggle, that battle? Yourself, a family member, a loved one, a friend. When you look at that painting, you think about that person that struggled with cancer. And maybe they, maybe they beat it. Maybe they didn't. Mine, my painting, you know, I unboxed it quite a while ago and I knew the instant I saw that painting, I was getting it and why just reminded me of my mom. You know, my mom fought cancer once in her 60s and, you know, she will say she beat it then. But then it came back, different cancer actually. And she fought and she fought and she fought and fought and fought for two and a half years and didn't win that time. You know, she didn't beat it that time. So that painting, when I saw it, it just screamed mom to me. And I knew I needed to do that painting for her. And that's what I'm going to be doing in October. All right. So get a painting in mind. Be thinking about what you want to do. Saban and I are going to have prizes. If there is anyone out there. And I'll just say it right now. If there's anyone out there who would like to sponsor that event in October, please let me know now. Just reach out. I'm not, I'm not reaching out to a bunch of people. I'm not really good at that. I mean, I've done it. I'm not comfortable with it. But, you know, if there's anyone out there who wants to sponsor it, if there's a small shop sponsor out there or anything, you want to just do a small something, that would be great. Saban's got cover minders. She's been collecting for um, multiple different cancers because you know all of the cancers have a ribbon color and whatnot and she's been collecting some things so yeah um that's what it's about so get ready for that i'm not sure i'm ready for that it is the whew, not only is it cancer um no one fights alone it is breast cancer awareness, which I have to be very aware because of our family history and my history and, you know, and it's also my mom's birthday month. It's a tough one. It's a tough month. I'm going to need you guys there beside me to get me through it. <laughs> I almost teared up just now. So, whew, you know, we'll do this together, together because no one fights alone. Okay. All right, I think I'm done for now. Get ready for gnomes in November. Then we'll go back to some fluffy, fun stuff. <laughs> we got to do some heavy, hard hitting for a while, and then we'll get back to fluffy gnomes in November with Angie. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm done. I've chatted long enough. I've just been like running my mouth. It's because Dale hasn't been here. I haven't had anybody to talk to. <laughs> So you guys are it. You're it. Tag, you're it. Okay. All right. I'm done. I'm going to, um, whoa, kick you. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kick you all over the place. Goodness gracious. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. And oh, my goodness, Joe. Joe, if I talked for two more minutes, I'd be at an hour. Lord, this video is going to take forever for me to process. It's going to take all afternoon to process. <laughs> And now that I look at what you guys, oh, no, I just kicked it. Maybe you could see most of the section. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm gone now. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care, everybody.